There is an abandoned hospital in Atsugi, Kanagawa Prefecture. This story takes place in that building. The abandoned hospital is located next to the highway, about 20 minutes away from Hon Atsugi Station. The hospital is huge. It has a massive parking lot, and I think it's about 10 floors tall. It's since become an urban exploration spot. At night, you can see torchlight coming from inside the hospital. Brave people looking for scares. The hospital is in complete ruins. There are pictures painted on the walls, as well as a lot of graffiti. I live close by the hospital, and I happen to pass it every day. I cannot stand scary stories or anything horror-related, so I was never interested in the hospital. I never would have thought that I would set foot in that place. Well, that was until my dog got off his lead and ran in there. To be honest, when this happened, I thought that my dog would just come running back straight away. When I called him, I wasn't really that worried. He's ran off before, in fields and in the woods, and he always comes back. On the other hand, I was certain that there was broken glass and shards of metal in there. Not to mention how close it is to the road, I was worried that my dog could dash out into the road and get hit by a car. Luckily, I always carry a torch when I take my dog for a walk, so I turned it on and headed in to search for my dog. It was nice and cool in the ward. This story takes place in summer, by the way. Inside there was garbage and papers everywhere. Most of the desks and cabinets which would have been used when the hospital was operational were smashed and broken. I heard my dog barking. He's in here for sure, I thought. It sounded like his barks were coming from down below. I made my way down the long hallway, following the sound of my dog's barks. They had started to sound more like whines. I was getting worried now, so I stepped up the pace. I reached the staircase and went down it. I could still hear him whining down there. I didn't want to go down there. This cold derelict hospital was seriously scaring me. I didn't want to go any further, but I had to. There was no way I was leaving my dog down there. I went down the stairs step by step, like a little kid might. I could hear my footsteps echoing around the building. I reached the turning landing on the stairs, heading towards the basement. The light from my flashlight landed on a figure. It stood there before me. I nearly dropped the flashlight, but then I realized that I was looking at my own reflection in a mirror. My heart felt like it was sinking. I was now more terrified than I had ever been before. There was something so disturbing in that hospital. It was as if the atmosphere was swallowing me. When I got off the stairs, there was another long hallway. I was shining my flashlight into the darkness, and I could hear that my dog was close by. I was whispering as loud as I could to my dog, Come here! Come on! I didn't know why I was whispering. I was almost certain that I was the only person in there. I just felt like I shouldn't make loud noises in this place. It was just so strange in there. I didn't even feel like it was part of the real world at the time. I'm not even sure if that makes sense. No matter how many times I called my dog, he didn't come. I just heard him barking somewhere down there at the end of the hall. If he wasn't going to come to me, then I thought that I would have no other choice but to physically pick him up and carry him out. I tiptoed as silently as I could towards my dog, but the second I approached him, with my arms outstretched, he made a whining sound and ran for it. It was as if he was spooked by something. He scampered past me. I pointed my flashlight in the direction of the area my dog had stopped and barked at. It looked like nothing but a white wall. I was wrong there. It was a pair of double doors. You've seen them before, in the movies, the big doors that open outwards and don't have door handles. I heard a jolting, creaking sound of a door opening. It seemed as if something was slowly opening the doors before me. My body started to shake. I needed to get the hell out of there. I took one look back over my shoulder as I ran towards the stairs. I wouldn't do that again. 
I couldn't look back. I didn't want to lay eyes on whomever was down there. I saw the entrance doors up ahead, and I clattered into them with all my might, but I didn't burst through them. I felt as if someone had grabbed my ponytail at the last second and yanked me back as if they were preventing me from leaving. It yanked me with so much force that it nearly knocked me off my feet. I think I screamed, let go, or something panicked. After about a second, I felt release and I hit the cold stone floor of the hospital lobby. I scrabbled to my feet and threw tears and more whines than my dog admitted. I was finally out of the abandoned hospital. For a moment back there, I thought that I would never see the light of day again. I was so worried about my dog for so long, despite my fear, I wandered around the outskirts of the hospital calling his name. I was completely distraught when I came to terms with the idea that I would be going home alone that night. When I got to my doorstep, I saw the dopey smiling face of my dog sat there waiting for me. Ah, oh, this guy. I didn't know whether to hug him or scold him. I was dirty, caked in dust and sweat, and I needed a shower. When I got out of the shower, something interesting happened. My dog was growling. He was pointed towards my front door. I will update if anything else happens, but I'll never set foot in that hospital again. I went with a psychic medium to an abandoned hotel. We were going there because we were shooting some footage for our own ghost hunting show. We were just starting up, so the equipment and the staff were limited. In this particular hotel, a terrible incident happened when a fire ravaged through the building, claiming the lives of employees and patrons alike. The rumors around the town were that if you went in there at night, you might see an apparition of a woman and you might hear screaming. There were tons and loads of rumors around this place. When we got into the hotel, it was so blackened and damaged. It was quite upsetting to see it just from the outside. Inside, there were many things just scattered around the place. It didn't even seem like a hotel anymore. As we went from the second floor to the third, the medium said that he could sense the pain and he said that he heard some screams from those who had lost their lives tragically cut short. We stopped to hear the playback on the tape, and we heard a kind of moaning sound. The psychic said that the moaning was coming from one of the bedrooms, so we went to check it out. This hotel room was just as messy as the others. We looked out the window, and there was a huge pool below. Next, we went around the outside of the hotel and decided we would finish recording by the pool outside. While we were poolside, we asked the psychic if he felt anything there. He just pointed up to the hotel, to the room in which he said he had heard the moaning. He said that there was a man, peering down at us, who had suffered horrendous burns. I swear that when my eyes landed on the room he was pointing at, I saw a dark humanoid shape moved beyond my field of vision. The psychic then said, I can't do this anymore. I think it would be best if we all just left. Some of my colleagues got on the bus home, but it was my job to drive the psychic back home in my car. On our way back, the psychic told me something terrifying. He said, at first, when I saw the figure of that man in the window above the pool, I thought it was someone who had lost their life in the fire, but I was wrong. It wasn't a tormented spirit. No, quite the opposite. Something malevolent. I believe we met eyes with the person responsible for the fire, but there was another spirit, a man who knew he wouldn't be able to escape the fire. Neither could his son. The poor man seems to be perpetually replaying that moment. I haven't ever experienced something so unbelievably tragic.
this happened when I was 18. I had finally saved up enough money to buy my own motorbike. It had been something I always wanted. I worked part-time, and I saved at every chance I had. I did any kind of odd job to earn money. I asked my parents for money. I was obsessed with getting that bike, and I was so happy that I had achieved my goal. I passed my test, got my license, and got myself a bike. I got it around the start of summer vacation, and I was going for a ride almost every day. During the end of summer break, I went and stayed with a friend who was also a biker. We decided we would ride to a local lake and go around it a few times. I went to a store to buy some snacks and some drinks, and then I hit the road. I headed towards his place. Around the lake there were many twists and turns, and he thought it would be a great place for me to practice taking corners and swerving. I was appreciative of his help, but I got tired of it pretty quickly. It was kind of exhausting, plus he was way better than me since he had been riding longer. We took a break and I broke out my snacks and drinks and we had a chat. We were relaxing, listening to the chirp of the crickets. Something then broke that silence. It was the shrill shriek of a woman. We were in a remote location in the middle of the night. There shouldn't be anyone here but us. The more I thought about it, the more I thought it sounded like laughter. Who's out there in the dark? I'll tell him to shut the fuck up, right buddy? My friend said in a very loud voice. I guess it was intended as a joke, but it sounded very aggressive. Then, almost in response, came the same horrible shriek. But this time, it was not followed by any laughter. Just one long note. Hey, hey, what's up with her, man? Maybe she's a crackhead or she's hammered. Which one do you think, bro? There was no response from me or the owner of that disturbing voice. I started to get worried. I hope there wasn't someone out there. There's no one out here, man. Nothing out here but that abandoned bus. He said that the bus had been there for a long time. Well, maybe there's a woman on that bus. I mean, you got to admit that screaming sound was pretty freaky, I said. Oh, yeah? Well, let me take a quick look. I haven't even been on that bus yet. And with that, he wandered off. I chuckled to myself and kept snacking. A few moments passed, and then my friend came running back. What happened, man? Ah, oh, you've got to come see this. I am not taking no for an answer. We went towards the rusted old bus, and he whispered to me. Don't freak out, okay? I could only just make out what was inside the bus. It was only lit by the distant streetlights. I didn't like it. My skin broke out in goosebumps. There were loads of papers with religious chants scrawled all over them. Garbage and knickknacks were stacked to the roof. There were bouquets of dead flowers. And empty milk glass bottles. I have no idea why these things were seemingly being collected and stored in there. As my eyes crossed over all the other gathered things in there, I swear I heard the soft chuckle of that woman's voice. My friend must have heard it too because he dropped his being the tough guy act. We quickly went back and made our way off the bus. The moment I set foot outside, I heard this thumping sound. We looked in the direction of that sound. There was a woman stood there, with blood running down her face, smashing her head into one of the windows on the bus. Her long, messy black hair was matted with her own blood. She stopped and walked towards us, smiling, and then got on the bus and walked towards the back. She stared at us through the windows all the while she made her way back there. Whoa, my friend exclaimed. He then ran, and I followed, and we got on our bikes and we got the hell out of there. And we haven't been back since. Had we been a little older or a little more mature, we might have not seen that woman as some sort of figure from a horror film, but a woman who perhaps needed some help. This is a true story which happened to me when I was in high school. Two of my best friends and I decided to go urban exploring. We didn't know it as urban exploring at the time, so we treated it like a dare, a test of our collective courage. We headed to a nearby mountain. 
It was a very high mountain. At the summit of the mountain there was a square. Just beside the mountain on the road below lay an abandoned hospital. Our plans to explore the hospital, then afterwards head up the mountain and drink some beer as a kind of toast. One of my friends had sneaked a few cans from his dad. We each stuffed one in our backpacks. We said to our parents that we were having a sleepover at one another's houses so we could be out all night. We entered the abandoned hospital at roughly midnight. There were metal beds, medical equipment, glass cabinets, paper, and lots of things strewn around the place. Everything was in disarray. The moonlight filtered in through the cracks of the aging building. I didn't hear or see anything strange or spooky in there, but I got this feeling in the pit of my stomach that something wasn't quite right in this place. I thought that I was getting creeped out because, well, we had come here for that purpose. Like this was how you were supposed to feel in places like this. But then I realized this was something much more complex than that feeling. I was getting very specific chills. The kind you get when you're laid up in bed with some kind of flu or fever. These chills felt like they were in my body. I didn't want to be the first to say that I was scared. I knew I'd be ridiculed if I did. We then left the abandoned hospital. We headed up the mountain on a narrow straight road. We walked in a line of three, with me being in the back. I was thankful that it was a bright night. The road up ahead was lit up by the pale moon. It made me notice the tree line on either side of the road. We were in the middle of nowhere. We kept walking up the mountain road. The further we walked, the sicker I felt. That internal chill was still with me. Then, something else strange. I heard weird whispering sounds and tree branches breaking from either side of the narrow mountain road. I kept looking over, expecting to see people in those trees, but there wasn't anyone ever there. There shouldn't be anyone there. I knew this mountain well. Beyond that tree line was nothing but waist-high boulders and trees, and either side of the road had a cliff edge about two meters away. There really shouldn't be a person there. And if there was, I should be able to see or hear them moving more clearly. There was definitely a voice coming from those trees, though. I couldn't make out what it was saying. It didn't even sound like words, just nonsensical gibberish. It frightened me because I could hear it on the right occasionally and then on the left. I swear I heard it coming from above me at one point, too. As crazy as that sounds, it seemed to follow us all the way up the mountain. Stranger still, whenever I went to ask my friends if they were hearing what I was hearing, I couldn't speak. It was like sleep paralysis. Literally, the signal from my brain was not getting to my throat. It was the strangest thing. There I was, headed up the hill, legs working fine, mouth firmly shut. I noticed that my friends were silent too. Were they experiencing the same thing? We finally reached the summit of the mountain, and the voice in the trees seemed to fade away. We were stood in the square at the top when I could finally speak. Oh, right. Uh, we're at the summit. It was a conversation just like that. We stood there in the dark beneath the pale moonlight, almost in silence. I could see everyone's faces now. Then one of my friends said, well, should we drink these beers? Yeah, the other replied. Then suddenly I heard a bang. It sounded like a gunshot. Suddenly my body felt lighter. We all just ran for it down the opposite side of the mountain. Nobody said a thing, not even screaming. It was really dangerous as a slip would have sent us over tumbling. We were going so fast. I didn't feel sick, and I didn't have the chills anymore. When we were down the mountain, I learned that I wasn't the only one who felt the chills and heard the voices on either side of the road. They also said that they felt like they couldn't speak. When we were talking about what had happened, 
I noticed that something was dripping from my friend's backpack. When I told him, he quickly opened it. The can of beer he had in his bag had burst. Me and my other friend checked our backpacks and our cans of beers had burst in the same manner. I guess that was the sound that we heard at the summit. I asked a teacher at school why a can might suddenly burst. He said that there are a number of reasons, but a drastic change in temperature would be the main one. I asked if three cans could simultaneously explode in three separate bags up a small mountain. He said that the chances of that happening would be near to impossible. Of course, none of my friends or I have ever went anywhere near that hospital or that mountain ever again. I have never felt anything like that before or since. Something is out there. There was an inn in my hometown. It was built in the 80s when Japan's economy was skyrocketing. Leisure resorts and the tourism industry all thrived back then. After that period in our history, the inn suffered a decline in popularity, possibly due to increased tourism abroad and the fact that inns like this went out of style. Eventually, the lot and the inn were bought by a development company and the inn finally and permanently closed its doors. Some had heard that the plot was to be used to create a relaxation resort. The odd thing was that the development company which had bought the land and the inn went bust. History repeated itself again, I guess. Before development began, the bubble burst. No company or anyone got involved with the inn and the plot of land, and therefore it lay derelict and only served a purpose as a gloomy monument to former glories. The inn wasn't exactly in the public eye. Back in the day, there were signposts pointing guests towards the inn from the highway. Now the darkness, weeds, and dense overgrowth had claimed the inn. If you weren't looking for it, you'd never find it. That in itself is a double-edged sword, I suppose. You wouldn't find a business sign for the inn either. All you would have seen was its ominous dark outline, if by chance you glanced out of your passenger side window as you passed it. It was around this time that the rumours about the inn began to spread around our town. There's no doubt that the rumours were born of the fact that it had become a frightening looking building and not through any substantial evidence. In short, people said the place was haunted. One rumour stated that the owner took his own life when his business went under, and if you go there at night, you can see his spirit. Another rumour said that there was a murder in the building. But of course, we know the history of the inn. We know these things to be nothing but baseless rumours. I know that the owner sold the inn at the best possible chance before the bubble burst, and he is living very comfortably these days. There was no suicide there, and no murders either. The locals usually know the stories which are behind abandoned buildings, but people who just see a derelict building presume they have the right to come up with their own versions of the truth. However, some of the locals have said that they have seen a pale light emanating from the inn, and they say that they have seen shadows pass by in the window. That's pretty creepy, right? The owner of that mysterious shadow was likely an urban explorer, and the spooky glowing orb of pale light was likely his flashlight. Because of rumours like this, the place has become supposedly haunted. It was actually featured in a magazine. I couldn't believe it. The magazine interviewed an individual who had witnessed paranormal activity in there. The interviewee was adamant that he saw an apparition in the inn. After this publication, the inn gained a lot of popularity. Young people would turn up at all hours of the night, making noise and flashing their flashlights everywhere. It annoyed us locals, so much so that there were requests to demolish the building and stop the nuisance which it had caused. Then as time went by, the day of the demolition of the inn arrived and the creepy abandoned inn was no more. It was said that there would be a shopping center erected in its place. I don't know why, but I was kind of sad to see it go. I guess that seeing it daily for 10 years or so does that to you. A few days after the demolition work had begun, 
I saw police cars parked outside the abandoned inn. I wondered if there had been a car accident or something. Later that night, I was watching the local news and I found out why the police cars were gathered there. During the demolition work, they had found the skeletonized remains of a body. Initial reports concluded that that person had passed away between six to ten years ago. Well, that coincides perfectly when all the rumors began. I guess sometimes there is truth in rumors. Maybe that man really did see something in there. And maybe those shadows weren't just urban explorers 